Dr. Montanari. Does the U.S.'s approach to electoral political warfare over the last century indicate a distinction in how it views international relations in comparison to other countries? Uh, in my opinion, yes. Um, you know, the idea that you can um, pursue your national interest um, by non-traditional means, uh, and I would say by very peculiar non-traditional means, such as intervening in uh, another state uh, electoral process, is uh, is rather uh, audacious uh, on the one end, and um, even I would say um, a sign of good confidence in its own capabilities. Uh, other countries, uh, no other country actually has ever tried to do the same. Therefore, uh, yeah, I would say that this is marking a, a neat difference uh, between the U.S. approach and other big power or great powers approach uh, to international relations in general. Yes. You stated that nowadays the European Union has slightly better technology in electoral political warfare than the traditional powerhouse, the United States. Can you describe how the EU has overtaken the US in this field of warfare? Right. Um, first of all, the EU technology, the EU know-how, is derived from the American one. So the American colleagues were transferring this knowledge during the 90s uh, within the OSCE or the missions. So uh, the technology where, uh, that the EU colleagues uh, started to develop was actually the cutting edge, was the best one available. Um, then the difference following, uh, following uh, this period, the difference was made, in my opinion, by different size of uh, the money invested. Uh, for several reasons, the European Union decided to invest heavily, much more heavily uh, uh, than the United States of America. And as we have seen, the result is that, as I said, slightly better know-how and slightly better technology are now in the possession of EU uh, experts and EU observers. But, I mean, this, this is not a real huge quantitative and qualitative difference, but some difference, yes, definitely. Why do you say that in third generation political warfare sometimes defeat must be accepted? Um, because the, the main point of third generation electoral political warfare is that you are conducting an overt operation. Right? You are not trying to conceal the fact that you are intervening in somebody else's uh, electoral process. In order to do that, um, you need uh, the state uh, that is object of your attention to let you intervene. Of course, if you are engaged into falsifying an electoral process, all right falsification, let's say, uh, and not manipulation, which is something different, uh, most likely the state will not let you in, will not let you operate. Uh, so uh, there is some kind of self-restraint that you, that you need to, uh, to use and employ. And this self-restraint can be conductive anyway to good results from your own point of view. Um, on the one hand, uh, if, you, uh, if you apply this self-restraint in approaching third generation electoral political warfare, even the state uh, that, uh, who is, uh, that is, let's say, um, um, uh, the, the, let's say, your counterpart uh, um, can accept this kind of activity. Is a risk that is an acceptable risk. This is the point. Uh, if the risk is deemed acceptable, you will be invited. You will be let in uh, into the, let's say, into the political field, the electoral field. And then you can use all your means, and it is then, uh, let's say, a competition between your good uh, electoral political weapons and your uh, opponent uh, counter electoral political uh, weapons. And who has the best will win, most likely. Thank you very much. Sir. You're welcome.